Well, somebody frigged up big time, Barb. There's no real easy way of saying this. I frigged up. And uh, we got this heister forklift. She got a seized water. So the story on this is I came out about a month ago and uh, they'd run it out of oil. Hadn't been serviced since March. I did the service in March of this year. We're in November. So I came out, they ran it out of oil, obviously because it's a long time without a service. And uh, they shut it off once it got clacky and noisy. Surprisingly, they didn't take out any main bearings, any rod bearings, anything like that, but they did kill the oil rings, so it started using oil real, real hard. And I told them, now more than ever, you need to check this oil every single day. We had an engine on order at the shop, which I think just arrived yesterday, but the truck's still here, which is like two hours away, because um, they're not ready to give it up yet. They still need it, because it has this special attachment on here. This, this attachment can come off, they can put different ones on it, and they don't have anything right now, so. Now they ran it right out of oil, they seize the fucking thing solid. So I got this access cover off here, the torque convert, torque perverter. And I can just kind of stick my pry bar in there and I can move it a little bit. So you can kind of see there. It's not the worst I've unseized. I actually have unseized these before successfully. So what I did was I filled it up with oil, 1030 which is the regular grade for this thing. If I can get it running and it doesn't sound like it's gonna throw a rod uh, right away, then what I'll do is I'll drain that out. I'll put some 1540 in it. Uh, I got it hooked up to my service truck for extra amperages. Let's see what we can get out of this thing now. So we're spinning a little, we get spin, spin, and then tight. Spin, spin, and then tight. The question is, is it rings or is it bottom end? Do we start off strong? And I'm sure the starter's getting pretty upset by now. Once we get some oil moving, so that oil pump kind of picks it up and starts sending it through. This feels like bottom end, it doesn't feel like rings. Let me see if I can get her spinning some more and if I can we'll try and uh, I'll try and get the start on video if it'll start. Well I've been giving her little uh, kind of like one rotation spurts of crank because the starter's getting pretty hot, I can smell it, which is not good. For shits and giggles, I threw my compression tester on there, and would you believe that thing's got almost 200 pounds of compression yet? It was burning oil like a SOB. Unbelievable. Now, of course, I've only checked one cylinder. That's probably all I'm going to check because I don't really care. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, every 20 seconds, I'm just giving her one, one full rotation anyways, and uh, it's starting to sound a lot better. But I'm pretty sure it spun a bearing, and I'm pretty sure that bearing's welded to the crank. I think it's a uh, main bearing, not a rod, but uh, yeah, I still can't, let's see, oh, oh, look at that, I can, oh, not here, I can move it by hand a little bit, there you go, definitely not rod bearing, definitely, uh, definitely main. And that's exactly what it felt like too. The first couple times I actually got it to crank pretty good and then it would lock solid. And I think that's because as soon as it starts to build oil pressure, it was more or less coming in and pushing that bearing against the crank because um, obviously if there is still a hole in it for oil flow, it's not gonna be lined up where it's supposed to be. So um, yeah, that's pretty well where we're at. Let me pull this compression tester and we'll spin it over again. Well, let's see here. Doesn't sound too bad. That's the longest crank I've given it in about half an hour now. So now I gotta debate if I'm gonna stick the plugs back in. I only pulled four of them, four of the six, just to kind of ease up the stress on the starter. And I was curious to see what the compression was at, so obviously it's quite good in that one cylinder. Anyway, 
Um, I did put a little bit of oil in the cylinders. That one I tested, I couldn't actually get the, the nozzle in, so it wouldn't have really had much in it. So that's good compression yet on that cylinder. Anywho, um, it's been another 20 seconds. This is all I've been doing. Giving her one full good rotation there and waiting about 20 seconds. So if you wonder what this is, that's the crankcase breather, which normally would have gone here. The reason why I had to take that out is because there was so much propane Propane. And going past the cylinder or the piston rings into the crankcase. If you shut it off and tried to start it again, it wouldn't start because it was way too fuel rich because it was sucking all the propane fumes out of the crankcase and going in there. So we just, I just put a cloth on there. That's all oil stained or oil soaked now, obviously. So I just put a cloth on there and then block that one off for now. Like you said, this is going to the shop to get a new motor, whole new engine. But uh, this will be a testament to. Uh, the Chevy 4.3, you got the fuel economy of a V8 and power and performance of a four cylinder. They're absolute uh, boat anchors in that sense, but they are pretty unstoppable. So we'll see if this actually does stop it and completely put it out of commission, or if I can get it running along enough to at least get it loaded onto a tilt and load. Maybe they can even use it around the yard here a little bit until it's uh, ready to go to the shop. But uh, we've got nine trucks at the shop right now waiting for major work transmissions and engines and stuff like that so I may end up having to bring the engine down here and do it right out here in the cold open so let me uh let's give it a little spin here sounds pretty good I think I'm gonna throw the plugs back in her and we're gonna go for broke stay tuned all right well I'm ready to try it uh I don't know what's gonna happen I guess uh one of a few things could happen it's either just gonna crank a little bit and then lock up and it's going to crank and start, and then lock up. It's going to crank, start, and run. Uh, it's going to crank a little bit and explode. Uh, it's going to crank, start, run for a little while, and then fail spectacularly. So put your guesses in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe if you're not already. I don't put a lot of videos out, but what I do, I try to make it something relatively exciting, kind of like this, nothing like uh, making a completely locked up engine run again. So last thing I gotta do is plug our fuel source back in. Is our cylinder, or our uh, solenoid for the propane. Propane, 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 propane. Propane, propane, it's time to start the game. There we go. All right, guesses. You gotta honk the horn to unlock uh, the ignition on it, which is very interesting. My uh, jumper pack's pretty well flatlined, but maybe it'll give us a little extra kick. I think that's it, I think we're good to go. I think we're good to try it, so let's see what happens. Ah, oh, she starts. Oh, and she knocks a little bit. Look at the blow by. I totally expected it to sound worse. It might, it might still. Ooh, yeah, she gonna blow up. <laughs> She's gonna blow for sure, listen to that. A little bit of throttle here. locked up right there. Let's just let her idle a couple minutes and see what happens. Maybe it'll self-clearance itself. I kind of feel like that shouldn't wobble so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure the uh, rear main has uh, left the chat. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's obviously not rod. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure it shouldn't wobble so much. But it's not pissing anything yet. Oh yeah. It's pretty smoky. Wonder if it'll restart. Or if that's gonna be all she wrote. Let's see. Oh yeah, 
Look at the blow by when I was cranking it. That's just awful. Holy. Well, she's been running a little over five minutes now, probably closer to 10. It may be a rod bearing, because in my experience so far, getting these things unstuck, mains don't usually make any noise. Uh, not like a knocking noise anyway, it's more of a squealing noise. This is, uh, sounds really more like rod. So my original plan was if I could get this thing running again, I was going to dump this oil, which is just 1030, and then put some diesel oil in, some 1540, uh, in hopes that uh, they could still use it a little bit until we can uh, get it loaded up and back to the shop. I don't think that's going to help. I don't think 1540 is going to quiet that up any at all. But you know me. I'm gonna do it anyway. Well, I wasn't even sure I have any uh, had any 1540 diesel oil on board, but uh, survey says bingo. Another thing I was just thinking about: there's probably a lot of you wondering why I didn't put a breaker bar on the front of it and uh, work it that way, and that's because these four threes are basically uh, Chevy small block uh, with two cylinders lopped off. So they have everything the same in the front and if you're familiar with them all you have is a little 5 8 he uh, hex head bolt in the front pulley or on the harmonic balancer uh, so it's probably like a maybe like a 7 16 uh, thick uh, bolt anyways and I did put a just a regular half inch ratchet on it and I was turning that bolt to the point where I'm gonna snap it uh, and it didn't budge the engine. So that's why I went with the pry bar method on the torque converter through the uh, inspection hole. Yeah, it was just the easiest way to go about it. And then I started using the starter motor to help bump it over. Anyway, this thing's getting pretty loud. It's nice and hot, so let's dump this oil and dump in some diesel oil. Well, I dumped the oil already. My pen was dirty before, so all those chunks and stuff are not out of here, but uh, feast your eyes on the glitter. Just look at it. Fair amount. I actually kind of uh, expected more. Well, let's dump the old 1540 in there and see what happens. Well, we got our 1540 in there. I don't know if we'll see a big show out of that blow-by tube. Sometimes we do. But just because I drained the oil and put fresh stuff in, it may not have a crank case full of fumes right now, but let's start it up and see what happens. What the hell? There we go. Oh yeah, she's still, still knocking bad. <laughs> yeah, I think that's all she wrote. I'm gonna move it over there beside the JLG. It's kind of the graveyard. And uh, at least that way it's out of the yard here and uh, it'll be easy for them to uh, load it up onto the tilt and load when she uh, heads back to the shop and gets a new engine put in her. But I don't think we're, I don't think we're going to see any excellent catastrophic failure today, unfortunately. But uh, we'll call it successful. She was locked solid, and uh, we got it running enough to move it anyway. So let's get her done. And until next time, I think somebody wants out. Rod. <laughs> Cheers.